Hey there, Angular folks, it's Brian, back again with another Angular CDK tutorial. Imagine your Angular application, but effortlessly usable by everyone. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. We're about to unlock a secret to building highly accessible components using a powerful Angular feature you might be overlooking, the List Key Manager. Get ready to quickly enhance and create interfaces that truly serve all users. Let's check it out. Here's the app that we'll be working on in this tutorial. It's just a basic list of active users. When we tab into it, the first item gets focused, but when we try to arrow through the items using our keyboard, nothing happens. When we click on them, everything works fine though, so that's good. But this isn't very accessible or very useful for power users who use their keyboard a lot. Let's improve this. But first, let's explore the current logic to better understand what we need to do. To start, let's look at the template for the list component. Okay, here we have a div that wraps the list of people. This div has an aria role of list box. This role tells assistive technology this is a selectable list, so that's a good start. We also have a click event here. This event fires any time the items within this list are clicked, and when it fires, it calls a handle click method, which we'll look at in a minute. Inside the list, we have the options that use a option directive. These also have an aria role of option, which fits with the list box pattern, so that's good. These items are tabbable once they are active or if none are active and it's the first item in the list. This allows us to always tab into the list and focus on the active item. Okay, now let's look at the TypeScript. Here, we've got a little bit of code already. For one, we have the handle click method that determines the index of the option clicked and then calls an apply list state function to update the UI based on the item clicked. This function tracks the internal active item with a signal, updates the tab index based on whether the item is active or not, and sets an internal active state on the option directive itself too. So this is why clicks already work. Okay, now let's look at the option directive. This directive is pretty tiny. On the host, it binds an active class when an internal active signal is true. Then it has a focus method so the parent can move focus onto it. We also have the setActive function that the parent uses to set the option active or inactive. So that's what we're starting with. Now how can we add the keyboard functionality? Well, we can use the CDK. The Angular CDK ships a helper called List Key Manager. We'll use it to handle the arrow key functionality and even more. But first, just a quick note. You'll need to have the CDK installed in your project in order to use the List Key Manager. In order to install it, you just need to run this command in the root of your project. I've already installed it in this demo project, so we'll skip this and jump right to adding the code. The first thing we need to do is add a key down event to our list. Then we'll call a function. Let's call it handle key down. And we'll pass it the event. All right, now let's switch to the TypeScript. Let's start by adding a new property to store the key manager instance. It'll be typed as a key manager that needs to be imported from the CDK Ally module. And then we'll use our option directive. Now right now, this has an error because we need to add a couple of things to our option directive. We'll look at this in a minute, so I'll just ignore it for now. Now let's add our handle key down function. At this point, we need to set up the key manager, but I'm going to do this in its own function. First, we'll check to see if the key manager exists. If not, we'll set it using the list key manager class from the CDK, 
And then we just need to pass it our options list. Okay, so now we have our key manager and we need to set the first item active. We can do this with the set item active function on the key manager. Then we just need to update the list state. So we'll call the apply function and pass it the first item in the list. Okay, now we can call this from our key down function. So this will handle lazy creating the key manager when it doesn't exist on key down. Now we need to handle when it's already set up. When this is the case, we need to pass the key down event to the list manager using the on key down function. This allows it to do its thing when using the keyboard. Next, let's create a variable to store the current active index. If one exists on the key manager, we'll use it. If not, we'll use our current active signal. Then we need to update the UI with the apply function and this current active index. All right, now we need to switch over and change a couple of things in the option directive. When using the key manager, we need to implement the list key manager option interface from the CDK ally module on the options. Also, we need to implement the highlightable interface also from the ally module. Okay, now that we're using these interfaces, they require us to add a couple of things. First, we need to add a get label function that needs to return the label for the option. Next, we need to add a function called set active styles. This function is called by the key manager when the option becomes active so we can set our active signal here. Then we need to add a function for the inverse called set inactive styles. Here, we'll set active to false. All right, now that these functions handle setting the active state, we can remove the old set active function. While we're here, we need to add the aria selected attribute on the host when it's active. We'll use null when it's not active. This will completely omit the attribute when it's not active. Okay, that's all we need here, but now we need to switch back to the TypeScript for the list and change one last thing. Here in the apply function, we just need to update the set active concept to use the new methods. Same outcome, just using the standard CDK shape. Okay, that should be everything we need to make this all work. So let's save and try it out. Let's tab into the list. Nice, the first item is focused, but it's important to note that the first item with a tab index of zero will be focused, so it depends on which item is active. Then when we use our arrow keys, now we navigate through the items in the list. Pretty cool. And we're still setting items active when we click on them too. But when we try to use the arrow keys after clicking, it doesn't quite work right because we never updated the key manager on click. Also, you may not have noticed this, but if I refresh, then tab to focus, while the first item is focused, it's not actually active. There's no active class or aria selected attribute on the item. So let's fix these issues. First, let's fix the issue with the key manager not updating on click. To do this, we just need to add our setup key manager function to add it if it hasn't already been added. Then we just need to use the set active item to set the active item based on the index of the item clicked. There. Now when clicking an option, if the key manager hasn't been created, it will create it and it will always update the key manager, setting the active item when clicked. Okay, now let's fix the first focused option issue. For this, let's add a new function called handle focus. In this, we just need to set up the key manager if it doesn't exist. Remember, this function creates the key manager, sets the first item active, and updates the UI appropriately. All right, now we just need to switch over to the template and wire this up. To do this, let's use a focus event on the option itself. There. Okay, let's save and try this out now. 
Okay, let's tab into the list again. Nice. Now the first option is focused and selected. And it even has the aria selected attribute. Perfect. And when we use the arrow keys, everything still works as expected. Now let's click an option and then let's arrow away. Perfect. The manager picks up from the clicked item exactly what we want. This is nice, right? But there's more. What if we want to be able to navigate in a circular fashion? So we hit the end and then we go to the top of the list and vice versa. Or what if we want to be able to hit the end key and navigate to the last item in the list or the home key to navigate to the first item in the list? Well, this is really easy with the key manager. Let's switch back over to the TypeScript. The list key manager can do more with fluent helpers. First, let's add with wrap. This makes the list circular. After the last item, next is the first, or before the first item, next is the last. Then, let's add with home and end. This wires up the home key to jump to the first item and end to the last. That's all. Let's save and try it. Okay, let's tab into the list. Now, if I arrow up, we move to the last item. Then, if I arrow down, we move to the first item. Now, if I hit the end key, we move to the last item. And if I hit the home key, we move back up to the first item. No custom key code written by us. Nice. And that's it. A plain list, a proper list box with real keyboard support using the list key manager, no custom arrow key spaghetti. We kept a clean list box structure, implemented the list key manager, and added minimal custom code to make this list fully keyboard accessible with some power user features too. This pattern even scales to multi-select list boxes, disabled items, the manager will skip them, and much more. If you want to see more lesser known Angular features that can level up your applications, like this video, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what feature you'd like me to cover next. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you in the next one.